This is the value of wrestling. The revolutionary force in wrestling podcasting. We are back. We are back. You know it. On the big time, right here on the Value Wrestling YouTube channel, this is a big time rant. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the rant with all the breaking news. Lots of the big names being released from WWE today. That is one of the mo big uh, news articles of the day. And uh, we are hearing right now even more releases coming down the line uh, from WWE. Looks like a lot of the NXT and even the uh, PC Center names are being released. We're getting those names as we're recording this right now. So we are on standby. So later tonight, what's going to happen? Myself, Paulus Clark, Miguel Z. We're going to get together. We're going to have a break it down episode. We're going to break down all the names and the releases, what we see in their future, what we think they might do, where they we'd like to see them go. And we're going to break it all down. We're going to have a, a roundtable discussion. So be here. Uh, it'll be Pacific Standard Time. Anywhere between 8 and 10 o'clock, we will be live going on uh, with all that, breaking it down, letting you know how, what we think, who got released, and uh, getting really into it once we have all the names and all the information. Hopefully by then, we'll be in good shape to go over that. But lots of big names in the releases. Some are shockers, some are not so big, uh, and, and we'll definitely discuss that. But anyways, let's open the show by talking about the big move right now. SmackDown has moved. In agreement with the USA Network, SmackDown will return to the USA Network um, going forward. It'll kick off in October of 2024. So next October, we have a five-year deal with the USA Network and SmackDown looking to be in the estimated value of $1.4 billion. So SmackDown going to USA Network, what does that mean for Raw and NXT? Their time is up next year, too, in October. And so we will have to wait and see, will they continue to have Raw and SmackDown, or a Raw and NXT on the USA Network along with SmackDown? We will have to wait and see how that plays out in the future. In other news, we have Sheamus. Sheamus' contract looks like it might be coming up. It'll be very interesting to see what will happen with Sheamus, another big name in the world of professional wrestling, whose contract is set to expire. No news or updates on the articles on what is going to happen with Sheamus going forward. So that will be interesting. Now, into some Vince McMahon news, ladies and gentlemen. In an SCC filing, it looks like something may be going down where Vince McMahon may be leaving WWE. A recent SCC filing, and this comes from Ringside News. It shed light on a potential desire by Vince McMahon to distance himself from WWE following the recent merger of it with Endeavor, which united WWE and UFC under the name TKO. It is important to note Vince McMahon remains under federal investigation with a search warrant extend, executed by the federal authorities after a federal grand jury issued a subpoena uh, to Vince McMahon on July 17th. To date, no charges have been brought to him in connection with the allegations of sexual misconduct and infidelity dating back all the way to 2006. A lot of people are talking about he's getting away with it. The SCC, it does say, as previously reported, Jacob Frinkle, Frint, Frinkle, chair of Dickinson White's Government Investigation Security Enforcement Practice Group and a former senior counsel in the SEC's Division of Enforcement, expressed the possibility that McMahon could face criminal or civil liabilities that might compel him to step away from his role within WWE. Following the, Vince, the merger, Vince McMahon currently holds 28.8 million shares of TKO which are presently valued at $3 billion. This is a huge chunk of the new company, but he's not the majority shareholder. Axis has reported that on the registration finally made by TKO, highlighting that Vince McMahon's registration allows him to bypass the lockup period that applies to other TKO stockholders, such as Endeavor and Silver Lake. TKO initially revealed its registration plans in an SEC filing in August, indicating that McMahon, alongside two other TKO executives, will be selling stockholders in this offering. Uh, this suggests the potential of Vince McMahon's eventual departure from the company. It is uh, a in a regulatory filing to even acknowledge that McMahon's membership on our board could expose us to negative publicity and or have other adverse financial and operational impacts on our business 
His membership also may result in additional scrutiny or otherwise exacerbate the other risks described herein, and any of these outcomes could directly or indirectly have adverse financial and operational impacts on our business. Vince McMahon has, was observed using a cane to navigate stairs and address WWE employees this week, having undergone spinal surgery during the summer. We'll have to see what happens next. WWE certainly went through a tremendous change over the past year, and if it's anyone's guess, what Vince McMahon will be doing in 2024. So, continued issues with the SEC, with the federal government, with Vince McMahon. Uh, he is on the board of TKO. He is the, the chairman of the board in TKO. Uh, but this could get interesting. If there's a filing saying we are a concern, uh, definitely could look like that Vince McMahon may sell what shares he has, get out from under it, and take his money and run, and we may finally see Vince McMahon out of the WWE. What does that mean? Well, it could mean a lot. It could mean nothing. It's all got to take it with a grain of salt until we have facts. Facts are going to be the issue. But right now, there's been a filing with the SEC that has some uh, reason to believe that maybe Vince McMahon will be leaving the WWE. And, well, some people will like it. Some people won't. But we'll have to see what the future holds for Vince McMahon, the WWE, TKO, and everything going forward. Another breaking news, Elias. Ladies and gentlemen, Elias has confirmed the identity of Ezekiel. A lot of people have speculated, and Kevin Owens himself, have speculated that it was Elias who was Ezekiel. Other people have suspected Elias was a fa- or Ezekiel was a family member of Elias. Lots and lots of people wondering, who was Ezekiel and what happened to Ezekiel? Well, we know it was revealed that Ezekiel was actually the younger brother of Elias. Oh, uh, let's go back to it. On the April 4th, 2020 epi- 2022 episode of Raw, a man by the name of Ezekiel made his WWE debut. Ezekiel looked a lot like Elias, only this man was clean-shaven and sh- had shorter hair. It was revealed that Ezekiel was actually the younger brother of Elias, and the two men would appear on screen together, and fans were 100% fooled. The only man who knew the truth was Kevin Owens. Sadly, Elias was released by WWE Today, and in a statement reflecting on his time, WWE- in WWE, Elias confirmed that he was actually Ezekiel. In a post on X, Ezekiel, or as I said, from drifting onto the scene to WrestleMania with John Cena and The Undertaker to millions around the world for years walking with Elias, a number one iTunes album to being my own younger brother is Zeke. While traveling the world, it's been a blast. Good God is good. I want to end up putting Ezekiel in a local medical facility on August 8, 2022 episode of Raw. Elias would return uh, into WWE on October 17, 2022 episode of Raw. And Kevin Owens was correct. Elias has let the cat out of the bat. Elias was Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is Elias. So, now that that's been settled, now that we have hard evidence, true to the core facts, we have an actual statement that we can pinpoint and go back to. We have a confirmation that Elias and Ezekiel are the same. Hopefully, Kevin Owens can rest better now, knowing that he was right this whole time. And we have to give credit to Kevin Owens for knowing the truth and seeking the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, what breaking news that is, right? Ah, uh, Seamus to leave WWE. Lots of talk. Seamus to leave WWE after a contract expires and join AEW to reunite with a 23-year veteran. Uh, big story there. Uh, Seamus' contract is coming up. It looks like he may want to go to AEW to pa- team up with his former buddy, Pow. From the bar, yes, we're talking about the one, the only, Claudio Castanoli. Could Sheamus and Claudio Castanoli appear in AEW together moving forward? Wow, who knows? In other news, it looks like uh, Adam Cole was he did get out of the hospital. He was on crutches, um, so it does look like he sustained some type of minor injury. We are trying to find more information that depicts that information a little better, but right now, not a whole lot of news, but it was reported that he went to the hospital. He was seen coming out with crutches. Um, we wish Adam Cole a speedy and healthy recovery, and we can't wait to see what he will be able to do next. He may have just sprained an ankle, twisted an ankle. I don't think it's actually as severe as some may think, but we will wait and see if we get any more information or updates on that. We'll let you know. Now, bigger news. Last night, uh, AEW Grand Slam uh, had a great match. We saw John Maxley face Ray Phoenix. We saw in the opening of that match that John Maxley was on the floor. Ray Phoenix came flying off the rampway into a spinning, uh, a spinning kick, a spinning heel kick, uh, or, or a, a, a famous or a, Larry, a leg layer type of maneuver. He took down Moxley. Moxley landed really bad, and it seemed at that very moment in time Moxley 
was, um, I had his bell rung. He was possibly concussed from that very moment. Uh, if you watch it closely, you did see Ray Phoenix kind of crawl over to Moxley. Uh, he put his hand into Moxley's hands, and it looks like, you know, they were, he was checking on him to see what was going on. Um, but it definitely looks like Moxley was concussed. He looked, uh, his eyes looked glazed over. He looked kind of lost. Uh, Ray Phoenix tried to roll in the ring, but he didn't really roll in. So Phoenix had to help him finish lane, rolling in. Eventually, it looks like Moxley came around and got better. It looked like he was doing okay. Um, and, 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 and got back into the match. Uh, we got to the end where, uh, Ray Phoenix hit a, a, a driver. Uh, I don't know the exact name. Um, but he hit that driver. It was a tombstone over the shoulder into a tombstone type of, uh, driver. If you watch Ray Phoenix, he spread his legs from Moxley's head, hit that mat again. So we don't know if Moxley sustained a second concussion from that hit. Uh, we did see that the ref totally botched this situation. Uh, this is where we, really where there's failure in, in the wrestling world, uh, or at least in AEW in this sense. Uh, there was really bad failure here that the ref didn't finish the one, two, three. Uh, the ref counted two in about a half and then stopped and acted like Moxley's shoulders were up when they were not. Moxley yelled, do it again. Um, and they went up and did it again, the same move, and the ref counted the one, two, three. Ray Phoenix became your new international champion, but uh, it was a bad ending to a decent match. A, because of the uh, botch with the referee, instead of just counting the one, two, three, uh, and letting it finish, because we all know, uh, and the, those stories always been, you finish the count, no matter what happens. Um, so we don't know what happened with the miscommunication. We don't know if Moxley was concussed. Uh, a lot of speculation believing that that match was not supposed to end that way, uh, that possibly even Ray Phoenix wasn't supposed to win the title, uh, that it was changed because Moxley knew he was injured and Moxley changed it on the fly. Uh, Moxley was in the back. Uh, the, the, there is speculation that Tony Khan and Renee were checking on him. It seems like he was okay, uh, but it definitely looks like he was possibly concussed pretty good. Uh, we are still trying to find information more in-depth on that, but um, it was a bad match. Um, there's a great review. If you're a fan of Stevie Richards, Stevie Richards has a great YouTube channel where he actually breaks that down, freeze frames it, slow motions it, and shows you a lot of the issues in that. Uh, and where there was some uh, a big problem that the referee didn't step up and um, take care of Moxley. Uh, because it is on the ref. The ref should be protecting the big stars. And uh, when the refs had any attention to notice that Moxley was out of it, he should have been pulling him out, uh, pushing him to the side, keeping Ray Phoenix away from him, and trying to figure out if Moxley was actually okay. But we didn't see any of that uh, there. And so it leaves you to wonder, uh, because this is the second time this referee has uh, had an issue where he didn't step up. And again, um, you know, a lot of this also falls on to the heads of uh, Tony Khan. Tony Khan has allowed AEW and a lot of people to do what they want and really leaves a lot of what-ifs and possibilities. AEW has a high level of injuries. It seems like a lot of people get uh, hurt. And yes, AEW tries to bring you the best action. They really let their stars go out here and do these crazy moves and go off. Uh, but are they worth it if you're constantly having some of your major stars injured? So, I mean, there's speculation. Is AEW a safe place to work? Does Tony Khan have his superstars in an environment that is safe for them to do these things so they're not getting injured? You hear a lot of injuries, a lot of guys getting injured here and there over things that they don't need. And we do not need to see concussions. This is not good. Um, I don't think, you know, it was right. I don't think Ray Phoenix should have done the same move again to uh, Moxley. I think there could have been a different move done. I know Moxley called to do it again and the ref to count it. A lot of speculation there. Um, dealing with that, I'm trying to find any articles here that deal with more in-depth on Moxley update because uh, it does look like he was okay. He was up and walking around in the back. Not a whole lot uh, there, but I would I would surely believe that he sustained uh, well, at least one concussion, if not multiple concussions. And uh, we are looking here. Lots of things coming down now. Let's see. Coming from Ringside News, John Moxley diagnosed with a minor concussion after injury scare at AEW Guyana Slam. Uh, Moxley remains one of the top stars in AEW as the company heavily relies upon him whenever it is in a pinch. However, he was involved in a scary spot on AEW Mighty Might this week. Many feared he was injured. It appears Moxley has been diagnosed with a minor concussion. Uh, Moxley lost the international championship to Gray Phoenix at Arthur Ashe Stadium during the Grand Slam event. 
which shocked fans. It turned out Moxley was actually hurt after taking a botched move from Phoenix, which ended up changing plans. Moxley was feared to have suffered a concussion after the botched spot. Moxley's head was driven into the mat uh, after taking a black fire driver, which ended up hurting him. Um, Meltzer look, took to Twitter to report John Moxley has been diagnosed with a minor concussion. No further details have been provided at this time. Um, and it's now being reported from PW Torch that Moxley actually suffered the concussion during the pre match brawl rather than the match with Phoenix. Naturally, a lot of stuff going on here. And it seems like Moxley will be missing some time due to a minor concussion. Let's see, is there an update? Uh, I'm looking at other stuff. It just looks like really bad. It looks like Moxley, honestly, uh, may have been uh, injured twice. Uh, it, they do have pictures that were coming out of uh, Tony Khan, Rene Paquette, Claudio. You were you outside of Moxley's trailer after this, checking on him. Uh, no reports that Moxley went to the hospital. But it does seem at the beginning of the match that's when Moxley definitely got rung as well. But if you look at the black uh, fire driver or tiger driver, black fire driver, I believe it is, uh, maneuver, you can see that Ray Phoenix opens his legs and drives Moxley's head into the mat, not once, but twice. So if he had one concussion, it definitely looks like he may have sustained a second concussion, which may have made the first concussion even worse. And that is the speculation, and that's where we come back to AEW being safe. It's Tony Khan making sure his wrestlers are being safe. Are they using moves that just shouldn't be used that can proceed or lead to severe injuries or concussions? Um, are they trained to use these moves uh, appropriately this did not look like a good move this was a scary situation let alone this is the second time this ref has had an issue with somebody getting hurt and not stepping up uh, and getting in the way you could see moxley was definitely concussed uh, from the start of the match and this ref didn't really seem to bother to check on him or call the match or or, or do something or figure out some other way to get there um so i don't know if tony khan uh, you know if you if you <laughs> watch tv richard's video he kind of uh Gives it a one-two on that whole ordeal, but this was a really, really bad move. Um, we don't need to see Moxley hurt. We don't need to see anybody hurt. We hope Moxley is going to be okay, um, that he, he recovers quickly and is able to get back in the ring as soon as possible because we love what Moxley does in the ring. And Moxley is a big part of what makes AEW AEW. Uh, so we will have to see what happens there. Uh, the question now, I mean, a lot of people are going to ask, is AEW a safe place to work? Is AEW taking all the precautions that they need to make sure maneuvers and performances and, and matches and all the stuff is working out? Is Tony Khan going to step up and, uh, you know, tell the referees, hey, you have to play a bigger role. You have to take responsibility. If you see a star that's injured, you need to, you know, make a call. You need to make choices regardless of what happened because uh, we don't need to see more stars injured. Uh, Moxley did his best to finish that match. Um, and it's just a shame that we have to see it in that way. But, as we all know, stuff happens, and we hope that it'll get better moving forward. Right now, we are just we are hoping that everybody will be okay, uh, and that we'll see Moxley back in the ring soon. That we'll also be able to see uh, Adam Cole recover from his injury and get back in the ring soon. And uh, we shall see going forward. So right now, as it stands, I'm going to go over the list of um release superstars and we can discuss uh a little bit about what happened there so the the, the list of people who got to hear yeah. and of course we here at value of wrestling uh do not take any pleasure in reading this list we do not you know uh, you know, we're not excited to have anybody that has been released for whatever reason. Um, you know, we don't like to see people lose their jobs. We don't like to see superstars that we enjoy watching each and every week, um, you know, be released and uh, have an unknown future. But we know and hope that many of these stars were able to recover and find footing in another organization or somewhere else and hopefully be able to move on. But let's go over this list. Uh, Yulia Leon, I cannot, I don't know the name, don't know, NXT star, was released. Quincy Elliott, Bryson Montana, Daba Kato, Daba Kato released. He was a big part in WWE here and there, but just never really found his groove. He was a piece in um, ha trying to help uh, Apollo Crews get over. It just never really worked out for him. Dana Brooks, longtime WWE star, been with the company for a long, long time. 
she has finally been released from the company. Uh, Mace and Mansoor, uh, the maximum male models, two guys that just never really got to get their fitting. Uh, Mace, who was a part of uh, um, a group with, uh, oh, I can't think of their name right now, uh, the Ali group. Uh, he, he just he never recovered from that. He became Mace. They tried to do something with him, and then he went on to join Maximum Male Models, and it just never panned out beyond that. The Freak Dancing Machine, Shanky. Yes, Shanky has been released from his contract. We will no longer get to see the big dancer, Shanky, continue dancing on our TVs in WWE. From there, we have Aaliyah. She has been released by the WWE. Top Dalla. One. Um, part or one third of the part of the um, oh the group top dollar Adrian Adonis um, B Fab that group whose name is eluding me at the moment but top dollar is definitely gone from uh, a, res a wrestling standpoint or a wrestling contract will he still be appearing on uh, WWE programming so as he helps them find historical artifacts of WWE. Do not know. Elias, Elias, as we talked about earlier, has been released. He did come out and announce that he was the one who was playing Ezekiel on TV. So Elias is gone. Rick Boogs. Uh, since getting Nakamura's guitar, man, the great Rick Boogs is gone from WWE. He has been given his papers. Emma, Riddick Moss, recently was engaged. or recently announced that they were engaged to get married, and they have now both been released by wwe uh it's a shame they're about to get married but hopefully they will be able to find footing somewhere else and we'll definitely get into that a little later but uh riddick moss and emma are now released from wwe and you know, emma was really not used much since she had been back a uh, long time veteran of wwe shelton benjamin has been released i think this is the second time in his career he's been released from wwe for other reasons and uh he came back he hasn't been used a whole lot but he has been served his walking papers Mustafa or Mustafa Mustafa Ali has been released from WWE after years of uh, after so much trying to get released from WWE asking to be released um, Mustafa who had been being pushed heavily in NXT uh, Ali has been released and we'll have to see what happens there and finally Dolph Ziggler probably the biggest name shocker in this uh, Dolph Ziggler had asked for release at one point didn't happen uh, Dolph Ziggler has been all over the place. Uh, he did a great job in trying to get Braun Breaker over in NXT. Uh, had a confrontation with uh, Austin Theory. And now Dolph Ziggler has been served as walking papers. A lot of the speculation with Dolph Ziggler's contract was already coming up. It was set to expire anyways. And they let Ziggler go. And if anybody you know, um, his brother is over in AEW, Ryan Nimeth, Nick Nimeth, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, so there's a lot of talk that Dolph Ziggler maybe will go into AEW. And we will see what happens from there. But Dolph Ziggler has been released from WWE. What will he do next? I don't know. Are there any more releases scheduled? I'm not seeing any more updates at this point. Uh, but it, it, it's definitely making the rounds. Uh, there is news and reports that uh, there is a no-compete clause. I'm sure we won't see most of these people do anything for the next 90 days in professional wrestling. Um, so we will have to wait and see what is going on. Uh, let's see here. Daniel McArthur was released from WWE. Uh, Daniel McArthur was signed after SummerSlam 2022 tried out. He's a four time NCAA All American. ACC track and field champion from the University of North Carolina. He holds both the indoor and outdoor shot put records at UNC and attended the 2020 Olympic trials. Uh, but Daniel McArthur has been released by WWE. That's another name. It looks like the Performance Center names are starting to flutter out. We will have to see. Uh, I, I'm sure not a whole lot of us are going to know the names that they've only been in the Performance Center. So, anyways. Lots of stuff to go over. Like I said, myself, Paul Escart, Miguel Z will be back tonight with a break it down. We're going to break down all the names of the superstars that have been released, what we see in their future, what we we hope we'll see, what we think we might see, and we will discuss all that in more detail. If there's any big more names that get released or any other names that get released, we will go over those at that time. So make sure you're here. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit that ring, uh, bell for notifications so you will be notified when we go live later tonight. And... Um, 
we hope you'll join us. Make sure you share this out, and uh, we will go from there. But for now, I'm the big time, and this is the Value Wrestling YouTube channel. I am out until the next episode. <laughs>